Hi, I'm Amelia. For my 12th birthday, my mom gave me this heart-shaped locket. Inside, there's a picture of my mom on one side and of me on the other. She told me, through this necklace, I'll be with you wherever you go. You can always look at it when you miss me. That year, both my parents died in a boating accident. I was the only one who survived. I didn't have any relatives to look after me, so I was placed in a group home. My life was completely upended. I would stare at my mother's picture and cry all day long. Eventually, a couple adopted me. Thanks to them, I started living again. But one day, they said to me, Amelia, we've decided to get a divorce. Unfortunately, we can't be your adoptive parents anymore. At 18, I had to go back to the group home. Since I was over 18, I could leave whenever I wanted, but I had nowhere else to go. One day, the director called me into her office. There was a guy in the room with her. Layla, I have great news for you. This gentleman represents a family that wants to adopt you. Thank you very much, but I just turned 18, I want to start building a life on my own. Ms. Amelia, if you accept our offer, we will make a donation of $5 million to the home. That's really nice of you, I will accept it for the girls. That's great. I'll be waiting outside for you. Thanks, Amelia. It means a lot. You're welcome, Ms. Parker. We're going with a helicopter? Yes. Please get in. I'll answer all your questions during our ride. Shortly after takeoff, he told me his name was Leon, and he was an attorney. I'm sure you're curious about your new family. You're in for a big surprise. Because you've been adopted by a king. He was right. Of course I was surprised. I had so many questions. I bombarded Mr. Leon with them. He politely answered all of them. I was in a dream. Why did the king adopt me? I asked. You'll find out soon, he said. I still couldn't believe that I'd been adopted by a king. I was scared to pinch myself because if this was a dream, I did not want to wake up from. Mr. Leon introduced me to Miss Isla. She was the butler at the palace. He told me she was the one who'd take care of me. She was a warm and friendly lady. First, she took me to the dining hall. Would you like to eat something before you head to your room? Every day we prepare 99 dishes for the buffet. What would you like? Thank you, but I'm not hungry at all. Even seeing all this food makes me full. Miss Isla then took me to my quarters. I was staring around, mesmerized. My room was magnificent. Three other people walked in. The royal tailors will take your measurements. They'll make you dresses you can wear every day or on special occasions. They're thinking about a hundred everyday dresses and a hundred gowns to begin with. Will that be enough for you? Two hundred dresses? Please don't get me wrong, but isn't that a little too much? Miss Isla replied, in that case, for now, we'll do ten each. I was going to say, then that feels excessive. But Miss Isla said, in the morning, you will meet the king. I'll leave you to rest, I'm sure you need it, and left with the tailors. I was so excited when I heard I was going to meet the king. What was he like? Would he like me? Why had he adopted me? Before I could even change my clothes, I fell asleep, a million questions running in my head. I woke up to a strange sound. I went to the balcony to see where the sound was coming from. I couldn't believe my eyes. Is that a unicorn? I'm sorry, is he bothering you? No, I love this. Do you have animals like this one around here? We have a lot of different animals here. You may run into them while walking in the garden. Are you their caretaker? Yes, my name is Lucas. Pleased to meet you, and I'm Amelia. I'm pleased to meet you too. I'll see you around. I have to feed the unicorns now. Can I come with you? I've never seen a unicorn before. He 
He's so beautiful. What's his name? His name is Lucas. Do you know why? I gave him my own name because he's an orphan like me. Every time I look at him, I think about my mother. I'm sorry, I don't usually cry this easily. I lost my mom too. Not a day passes by when he don't miss her. If we will ever have a female baby unicorn, we'll name her after you. Thank you, Lucas. Amelia, you're here. You are finally going to meet the king. I'm sorry, I almost forgot about that. Bye, Lucas. I'll see you around. The king is in a meeting right now. Meanwhile, we can go and visit a spot, which I think you will love. After passing through many doors, we came to the place Miss Isla was talking about, a jewelry store. It had a sparkling display. There's a jewelry store inside the palace. Is it only open to the royal family? Miss Isla and the man inside laughed. Miss Isla replied, This is not a store. These are the royal jewels. You can take anything you want. The man was holding a necklace made up of gigantic diamonds. Would you like to try this? It's one of the most valuable necklaces in the world, he said. I held on to my own necklace. Thanks so much. But I already have the world's most valuable necklace right here. Miss Isla was taken by surprise. Are you sure? You can have whatever you want from here. I don't think any girl can resist these pieces of jewelry, she insisted. Thanks so much. But I don't ever want to wear anything other than this necklace. Miss Isla said, in that case, we can now go and meet the king. I'm sure he'll be delighted to see you. Going into the throne room, I was so excited I thought my heart would jump out of my chest. I was staring at the floor because I didn't know what else to do. When I looked up, I saw the king and the prince next to him. I was so baffled that I almost fainted. You have every right to be surprised. I'd be surprised, too, if I saw the animal caretaker I'd just met this morning, as a prince later the same day. You might be even more surprised when you hear the rest of the story. Ever since you entered the palace, you've undergone a series of tests. You're the 46th girl who came here. But, unfortunately, the previous 45 girls had been disqualified before they could get to this phase. You're the first girl who's passed all the tests and met me in person. My wife had grown up in an orphanage. She wanted Lucas to marry an orphan, too. So we wanted to fulfill her wish. Mace, Ela designed several rounds of tests for us to pick the best bride for the palace. Ms. Ela, please go on if you like. With pleasure, my king. Our first and easiest test was the all-you-can-eat buffet. Three of the girls who came to the palace couldn't resist it and ate for hours, and of course, they got disqualified in the first round. Eight girls were disqualified during the dress test. They quickly accepted my offer to make a hundred everyday dresses and a hundred special gowns, for some of them even that wasn't enough. The other candidates were disqualified at the last round, which was the jewelry test. When they saw all the jewels, they almost lost their minds. They wanted to get so many rings, earrings, and necklaces. This, of course, showed us how greedy they were. You didn't want any of it. And that's how you passed all the tests and became the first girl to meet our king. Lucas. Amelia, will you marry me? Yes, I do. By the way, a female baby unicorn was born but I didn't give her my name. I named her after my mom. Now there's one more thing that reminds me of my mom every time I look at it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more stories like this.